Ooh, chili. Hey everybody. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, I have not talked all day. <clears throat> I'm sweating like a dog. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Howell Carter. I'm the creator of SilkinHavoc.com. It's a blog and website that's dedicated to bringing new and fresh content to you. Today we're going to be doing a mermaid nail tutorial, and I'm also going to be talking to you all about my experience as a man that wears nail polish. Um, I've been wearing nail polish for about two to three years consecutively now where I paint my nails or get my nails painted at a professional shop. Typically, I'll get a gel manicure, and I'm typically the only man that's actually in the nail salon. Um, at this point, everybody's used to me coming in. Today, I'm going to be using just basic nail polishes that I had sitting around my house, as well as other craft products um, like glitter, um, and little dollar store paintbrush things, um, and we'll see what kind of nails I can come up with that are mermaid inspired. To get started, we're going to put a clear gel base coat on each nail. Then cure each hand to dry your polish. Do this for both hands. So here's a story that has always stuck with me. I remember being in preschool. I was playing basketball with the other boys. And all of a sudden, one of the boys stopped and told me I couldn't play with them anymore. Because I had what the boy thought was an ear piercing and an earring in my left ear. I remember he said, Boys don't wear earrings. Those are for girls. Well, actually, it wasn't a piercing or an earring at all. It was actually a dot-sized mole placed perfectly on my left earlobe. That was the first time I remember being gender policed. You're probably wondering what that means. Gender policing reinforces normative gender expression. Basically, I was perceived to be doing gender wrong. I was being a boy the wrong way, and to him, I should be outcasted for it. Now, as an openly gay black man, I think back to this story often. I think about all the implications that it had, not only on my gender and gender expression, but as I got older, the implications that it had on my sexuality and the way it would be perceived by others. As a kid, I was always super smiley, sweet, hyper, but respectful. I caught on very early that people often pinpointed that something was very different about me. As I got older, I began to pinpoint the difference too. I wasn't into sports, even though I gave a few a try. Track, cross country, swimming. They were all cool, but I knew deep down they weren't my thing. I never really had the urge to fit in with the guys. I was naturally drawn to the girls. My favorite song was Destiny Child's Bills, Bills, Bills. My very first CD was Candy Barris's Don't Think I'm Not. I remember being obsessed with her album cover. To this day, I still don't know if I thought she was just so beautiful or if I just was fascinated by her shiny iridescent pants and just wanted them for myself, knowing I never could. Either way, I begged my mom to buy me the CD and she did. 
I remember I wanted to grow up to be an entertainer. I love the arts, to sing, to dance, to be a creative. My father was an artist, so all these things seemed normal to me. My father was 6'1", a stocky guy. He loved to cook and whistle. He appeared mean at first glance, but could make even the most stale-faced person in the room crack a smile and then fall out in laughter. Humor was his love language. He was full of love. In eighth grade, my dad allowed me to get my ear pierced and I was so excited. He sternly enforced only the left one though, just like his, only the left. He didn't say it, but I knew what he meant. The left ear was the straight ear, and the right was the wavy ear, if you know what I mean. I remember hearing that back as a kid. I know you're probably thinking, how does all of this relate to me painting my nails? Hold on, hold on, I'm getting to it. Pause, let's get back to the video. As you can see, nail one is almost done. I added a scale pattern, covered it with iridescent triangles and drowned it in glitter. For each nail, I'm really just letting my creative juices flow and letting each nail design itself. As I think back on these experiences, I know for sure that what others and at times myself once saw as my gayness being visualized, my love of Beyonce, my love of the arts, my passion for knitting, my sometimes meek and mild demeanor, my colorful nails, they are all actualizations of my gender expression. Though I may identify as cisgender, many may not see me as the manliest man, and that's fine with me. That's not my desire. But I can't say this is always my truth. Remember in college, something clicked. I had a bright idea that would fix everything. Join a fraternity, that would definitely toughen me up. So I dropped all my female friends and joined a campus fraternity in hopes of becoming a real man. But going to a small liberal PWI in Wisconsin, we weren't strolling, doing the fraternity shimmy, wearing bow ties and fancy canes like I had seen all the black fraternities do. We were watching Spartacus together and did naked pranks. These were actually the most gayest experiences I had had up until this point in my life. And they literally weren't gay experiences at all. It was like I ran from one burning building into another. So you guessed it. This didn't make me more of a man or toughen me up at all. But looking back at this experience, I realize now I was policing myself I was policing my own gender expression. This happens far too often to young boys, just like me back in preschool. It's crazy to think that one small mark on my ear had the potential to be the deciding factor as to whether or not these boys would accept me into their boys' brigade. The part I forgot to mention it's when I cleared things up with the boy. I explained it was just a mole, no piercing. It was like the incident never happened. The boy continued playing basketball and I was welcomed as one of the boys again. 
But as I think back on this day and this story of gender policing, I'm reminded that it happens far too often. Not just to boys, but grown men. Not just gay men or queer men like myself, but all men. This story has a bigger principle, one that surpasses a beauty mark. When the boy gender policed me that day, essentially he was rejecting me because he felt that if I had an ear piercing, I was acting like a girl and he didn't want to be associated with that. What does this mean for the little gay boy in school? or the straight boy that has a slightly effeminate way of speaking. They often don't get the chance to clear up the misunderstanding. As a man, I feel the pressures of gender policing. As a gay man and as a queer man, I've sat in the fear of walking into a straight space. Finding myself wanting to blend in and be invisible, just another man amongst the crowd, standing up straighter, deepening my voice, even slowing down the way I speak. One of the reasons I paint my nails. Yes, I paint them because I want to, but I also paint them because it forces me to be visible, even when I don't want to be. Just as a tattoo on my right forearm reads, authentic in black ink that forever stains my skin. I am reminded that I feel my proudest, my most safe, my most true self when I am authentically me. Authentically Howell. Thank you again for watching this video and if you enjoyed this video and like my nail tutorial don't forget to like this video leave a comment below if you enjoyed today's topic and also don't forget to continue the discussion below see you next time